what's going on with that. And uh, uh, it's a complicated signature, that's for sure. It looks like there might be some rotation in here, but it's difficult to say. Uh, that's generally headed towards Houston. Then uh, more tornado warnings off to the north. Let's go on, uh, on and take a look at the tornado warning farther northward here and Tupelo. Now in a tornado warning, and let's take a look at what's going on with the rotation on that particular cell. Uh, there is pronounced rotation coming into the Tupelo area. Uh, I'm going to get another look at this on, on our high-resolution radar there. But, uh, Dave, if you could go ahead and talk about that for a second. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. Tupelo is a city in northeast Mississippi with a population of 15,000. And a tornado, or what appears to be oh on radar, gosh. is heading right toward Tupelo. And it will be in the area momentarily. Notice the time up there, 2.43 for Tupelo. Well, it is 2.37 right now. So now is the time to take cover. We've lost people. People have been injured in Arkansas earlier. That was yesterday. And now the threat area is Mississippi. A tornado warning once again is in effect for Tupelo. Uh, Dave, There's the couplet. My gosh, uh, this is very scary, Dave. This is a, a pronounced rotation that is now coming into Tupelo. Folks, if you are in Tupelo right now or anywhere near Tupelo, please take cover immediately. You've got a very, very strong rotation that is now moving towards Tupelo and the uh, 45 corridor there. The movement on this cell is to the northeast and rapidly, 50 miles per hour. This is not going to give you very much time to react. There's the new scan that just came in. This is coming into Tupelo below right now. That scan just came in at uh, 36 minutes after the hour, so this is relatively recent, and this strong rotation is now coming right into Tupelo and perhaps the north side of Verona as well, uh, looking to see if there's some debris. There might be some debris right in here, difficult to say, but it looks like there could be some debris right there. If we were to see debris, that would, that would give you proof positive that, that, that it's contacting the earth. Absolute confirmation if we see a, a pronounced debris signature. But uh, we are seeing the hook right there. This is a little inflow notch, as we call it. That's where the warm and humid air feeds into that rotating updraft, which is sitting in here. And that's where the tornado likes to be. And again, looking at the rotational signature, uh, wow. that's a tremendous rotation. So uh, that might even be, as a matter of fact, what we call a tornado vortex signature. So you've got a larger circulation right in here, and then right Right in there is a even tighter circulation, so it appears that a tornado is headed pretty much right for Tupelo. It's there. I'm sure okay. sirens are going off. We, we got it. We just heard a report of a multi-vortex tornado. So that mm. that is west of Tupelo, and that is a, a surefire indication of a large and very powerful tornado. So please, again, if you are in Tupelo, take cover right now. Lowest interior room, put as many walls between you and the outside as you can, and you want to stay away from the windows as well. If, is, if you know someone in Tupelo who might be elderly, who doesn't have... Uh, a cell phone who doesn't have cable, who doesn't have access to information, call them now and tell them there's a tornado headed their way. Tell them to take cover. Yeah. Lowest floor of the building in which they find themselves, I, okay? I, Tupelo, Mississippi, under the gun. It looks bad for you guys. I, I, don't, I don't think we have much time here at all. Uh, we're now looking at it's, uh, 38 yeah. minutes after the hour. This scan uh, came in at 36. And remember, the movement here is 50 miles per hour. Yeah to the north and to the east. And so it is rapidly, rapidly moving. It's closing in on Tupelo. We're getting a report of a quarter mile wide storm that's now moving into Tupelo. Quarter mile wide, multi-vortex tornado coming into Tupelo. Please folks, take cover right now. Uh, now is the time to take cover. You're just not gonna have a lot of okay, time. Okay, we have a today. live look at this, Carl. Okay. This is Tupelo, Mississippi on the left. Can we get in any tighter? Yeah. W. Yeah. Yeah, let's expand that if we this can. This is WTVA's camera out of Tupelo, Mississippi. And do we know what direction we're looking in? Guys, can you bring that out full so we can get yeah. a, a better look at that? Okay, so there's, there's a wall cloud there, and uh, it's difficult to see exactly where the tornado would be located. So that would be dead center in, in, in the shot, am I yeah, right? It, Okay, so we've got a lowering right here, and it, it, this appears to be a tornado right in here, mm -hmm. but it's difficult to say. We're not seeing a connection all the way to the ground there. There's uh, definitely a lowering, and we're getting a lot of rain uh, over off 
on the left side unless it's sitting back in here and is obscured by rain, which is entirely possible. Uh, but right in here where we're seeing this lowering, that's the wall cloud there. And then the tornado could be sitting back in here. It is difficult to see mm. because of all that rain, but this may very well be a rain wrapped tornado. And I, I think as we're looking at it more now, I think I'm getting a sense of a wedge right in here. And again, we've gotten reports of a multi vortex tornado and a, a large tornado quarter mile wide uh, back in here and coming towards Tupelo. But it, it's not immediately apparent when no. you look mm -mm. in that particular view. Right. But we've already had ground truth. And, these, yeah. and the tornado or the, the vortices within the tornado will lift briefly. And that, that can happen, though, you know, oftentimes when you've got a, a really powerful tornado, it's going to go on for a while, which oh. makes me wonder why, uh, you know, if it's just obscured at this point. Yeah. Um, because, uh, again, it's not not readily apparent. Oh, my gosh, a tremendous signature is now just about right on top of Tupelo. Let's go back to the radar picture very quickly and check that out. Uh, there's a, the tornado warning for Itawamba, Lee, and Pontotoc counties. Uh, and let's go over to Gibson Ridge, Sean, and check that out. And uh, we're seeing just this tremendous rotational signature that is uh, now coming right into Tupelo. And checking some of the other parameters here as well. Um, not seeing, again, uh, tremendous evidence of uh, uh, any sort of debris there. But there is a, a big ball, a big circulation right there. And the tornado likes to sit right in there. And uh, this is that rotational signature. That's just about as strong as, uh, as we've seen. That was as strong as the one that we saw in Yazoo City. So very strong outbound and inbound rotation there with this particular cell as it's closing in on Tupelo. But still, uh, Dave, can't really get a good look at it at this point. We're not we really see seeing it. But, but of course, the, the Weather Channel is not in control of this camera. Right. This is, this, this is from a TV station in uh, Tupelo, Mississippi, WTVA. So they're looking around, obviously, looking for the uh, for the tornado and as you see it, it, it say it may be rain wrapped or hail wrapped at this point or we may not even be looking at it could be right in there and I think I just I think I saw some uh, power flashes in the far distance well, it's, it's hard to say it's very difficult to, to say yeah I, yeah yeah it'd be great to know what direction we're, we're looking mm -hmm. in this particular case is that hail or is that rain yeah it looks it's like probably rain, rain splashing yeah, off yeah, uh, yeah, just yeah, below yeah, the camera yeah all right. Well, that's fine. Non-essential to uh, in Tupelo, Mississippi. Non-essential employees at WTVA being sent to the basement by the chief meteorologist. Okay. Okay. All right, I think so you probably just overheard that from one of our directors. Yeah, that's right. So non-essential employees at that station being sent to the basement there in Tupelo. Uh, again, on the right, you see this uh, incredible circulation. You just don't see. Uh, as strong a rotation as that very often, and it's right near the base of that circulation, right in here where that tornado may be. Uh, WTVA is located there in Tupelo. That was actually my first television station, and uh, we're getting that camera from WTVA right now, and uh, they are looking at this thing off to the south and to the west. And uh, uh, severe weather expert uh, Dr. Greg Forbes now raising the Torcon value to nine for northeast and central parts of Mississippi and northern parts of Alabama. So that is the highest value that we have seen so far this season. That means that we urge everyone in those areas to pay extremely close attention to the weather through the rest of the day today. I wonder if we could pull out on the radar. Sure. Okay, we've been really tight. This is Tupelo, Mississippi. Just want to show you that this is not the only game in town. Yep. And the whole, gosh, from southwest Virginia all the way back into southern Mississippi, we've got activity that's producing tornadoes and large hail and yep. damaging winds. Yeah, here's another uh, rotating storm. This is near Houston, Mississippi. That's generally headed towards Okalona. And so that is a tornado warning for southeastern Calhoun County. Excuse me, that's for Chickasha County. And uh, that is moving northeast at 50 miles per hour. Also possible golf ball size hail along with that storm. We'll zoom out a little bit once again, uh, looking at a couple of other tornado warnings here farther along towards the south. I'm going to bring up the other radar and we'll go down towards uh, Jackson here. One cell off to the north is being warned on for a tornado warning. Uh, and that is in effect for Yazoo and Madison counties. Let's see the latest warning there, Madison, Yazoo County until 315 and the movement there is northeast at 40 miles per hour. Then to the north of that, another cell here, tornado warning for Atala and Holmes County, confirmed tornado located near Midway, 
moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. We'll take a look at the rotation there. My goodness, look mm. at that. Another pronounced rotational signature. And you can see where this is relative to Goodman and Durant. So right in here, once again, very strong rotation. And that is coming towards Goodman and Durant as that moves northeast very rapidly at about uh, 45 miles per hour. Tornado emergency for Tupelo, Mississippi. Dr. Greg Forrest reports that there is now a tornado emergency called for Tupelo, Mississippi. Tornado emergency for Tupelo, Mississippi. Take cover immediately, especially if you live north and east now of Tupelo. That tornado is heading toward you. All right, that is a, just an unbelievable rotation signature there. And uh, we're looking at the live camera once again from WTVA in Tupelo. I, I think we may be getting a look at this tornado now. Uh, can we bring that out a little bit larger and, and try? And there it is. There is that yeah, tornado. There it is. That is coming uh, right into. So let's can bring we that draw into that? The, yes, let's get that into the screenwriter. And uh, what we've got here is at least has been reported previously as a multi vortex tornado. So right in there, that's where it is. That is the tornado right there. And this is now coming right into uh, Tupelo proper and a tremendous rotation on this storm mm. as it moves to the northeast rapidly at 50 miles per hour. So again, if you are in Tupelo, we urge you to take cover immediately. Now is the time to take shelter. You're just not going to have a lot of time to figure out what's going on with a movement on that cell that is as quick as that. Damage has been reported in parts of Tupelo? Yes. Thank you. There's been damage in Tupelo, so that's another reason we know that it is happening. Oh my gosh. Now, look at this here. That right there, I think that entire thing right there, I think that is a large wedge tornado wow. that we are watching in Tupelo. Mm -hmm. and it, we're, we're looking at it from a little ways away, but we're getting a really good look at it. Now, there's power, power flashes, flashes on right the left. there. So that we, yes. we are clearly, and that was actually well outside of the area that I outlined. So I think maybe the east, or excuse me, the northern side of the, the storm is probably in here. And then it looks like part of that tornado is actually being obscured by rain where we just saw some power flashes in here. So it's, it's very humid out there. And when it's humid like that, it's a lot more difficult to see the storms. That's very different from what we see in the plains, for example, when you've got a drier environment and the air is much clearer and you get a really good look at these things long before they get to you. Uh, storms across the south can be very dangerous because you don't get a good look at them. There are a lot of trees, of course, in a good part of the south, and they have very low bases. So you've just got this murky mass here, and then you see this darkness, and it looks like the wind is, how really, shaky it is, is right? really beginning to uh, to bother this camera. Now, Carl, you, you work for WTVA. Yes. Do you know where this camera is set up? No, Do you have I, any idea? I, I, I actually don't think there was a camera at uh, WTVA when I was there. That was oh. a long time ago. That was 1991. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not sure that they even had one at the time. But, uh, you know, we're just seeing a tremendous signature. Let's go back to the uh, radar picture and show you the scan uh, there in Tupelo. And look at that. Wow, that is just an unbelievable storm that is now moving right into Tupelo. There is the velocity signature, and that is a pronounced velocity signature. And we'll check some other parameters once again. Um, not seeing quite as much of a hook right now. You know, we talked about the fact that the tornado is largely obscured, and, and this is evidence of that, where you, sometimes you see a very clear hook-like pattern. There's still evidence of that there, but you see a lot of rain now uh, associated with this tornado. So it, it's really becoming rain-wrapped. The mm -hmm. rain is getting involved, and that makes it even more dangerous because you can't see it coming at all when you've got so much rain involved with the storm. Uh, and then as we look at that, and there does appear now, we, we haven't seen much evidence until now, but that, I think, could very well be uh, what we call a uh, debris ball there, or a signature of debris right uh, to the west of Tupelo, that low uh, correlation coefficient, which indicates that you've got non-meteorological targets. So all this other color here is rain uh, and hail and whatever else. And then right in there, you've got irregular shapes that could be branches or trees or structural damage. And I think that's uh, what we're seeing right in there. I think that is an indication that there is, in fact, debris with this particular storm. So the stronger winds from the tornado cause the damage, the debris gets wrapped up in the circulation and is picked up by the rain. Are. Is that correct? That's exactly right. Okay. Exactly right. Can you show me where the large hail is going to be from this storm? Oh, yeah. Tremendous hail that is uh, off to the north there, and that's uh, getting up into Guntown and also into Saltillo. Uh, as we look at the differential reflectivity, we're seeing evidence of that. This is called uh, Ville, Ville density. When we start seeing these values in pink and then getting into white, that is a clear indication of uh, golf ball and larger size hail. We're seeing that uh, near Tupelo and then up there on the north side 
And let's go back here and take a look. At it. And there is a debris ball. We are seeing a debris ball now with this particular storm. And uh, that is now just west of Tupelo. So a, a very well-defined tornado now showing up there. And then right in here is that, uh, that tremendous circulation there in Tupelo. I don't know if we still have the camera. Can we still go to that live camera? from Tupelo, we have no, no camera. camera now. Okay. Let's okay. talk about these highways. Can we put those on there? Yeah, we'll have to really well, let this people is 45. Know where this, is. this is 45 right through here. That's Interstate 45. Yeah, okay. that's 45. So and the tornado is just to the west of Interstate 45 in Tupelo. Right. And it's coming up and, and right across Tupelo as we speak. We have a new image from Tupelo, Mississippi. This is the new radar image from Tupelo, right. so the center of the circulation right over Tupelo. Right over Tupelo, just west of Interstate 45, which is that squiggly line going north and south. There it is, Interstate 45. It looks like the tornado is right over, what is that, 145? Yeah. And County Road 811. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's, it's, it's right across 45. 45 is that road that runs uh, from uh, Tupelo and down to Columbus and then farther to the north and then the one that runs basically from northwest and down to the southeast uh, that is it in the Tupelo area and I'm just getting a look at that right now uh, it's taking uh, a while to come in unfortunately just a reminder for everyone we're following a tornado that's been confirmed damage has been done a tornado emergency is in effect for Tupelo Mississippi right now that's why we're focusing in on this area because there's been damage. It's a very strong rotation in the clouds. We've had video confirmation. We've had reports <coughs> of damage. We've had reports of a multi-vortex tornado spinning toward Tupelo. It's right over Tupelo right now. Near the Tupelo Mall is the latest report. Yeah. Moving northeast at 50 miles per hour. And this is, this is really right at the intersection of 45 and 78. And let's go back to the Gibson Ridge because I want to show uh, what's going on with that once again. And so what we've got here is this larger circulation right in here. There's a larger circulation right there, but then within that is a smaller circulation, and that is the tornado itself. And that now appears to be just to the northeast of downtown Tupelo, just to the northeast of the intersection of 45 and 78. And uh, again, as mentioned, and this, by the way, that little ball right there, See where the ball corresponds to the, the arrows that I put on there, where the tightest circulation was? That is most likely the debris. But uh, again, you see that there's all this heavy rain, unlike some situations where you've got a very clearly well-defined hook echo. I mean, you can see it here, but you've also got a lot of rain in there. So this tornado is, is obscured by this uh, particular storm. And let's go ahead and take a look at that debris ball on the radar picture. Uh, and. Uh, once again, right in there, that's that very high reflectivity that is, uh, oh my gosh, look at that. Uh, wow. let's, let's go back to the Gibson Ridge, folks, and, and see what's going We've on. We just got another report of a large wedge-shaped tornado in Tupelo. Yeah, this is, this is awful. This is just awful to see this, Dave. So uh, once again, we, we talked about the tornado now being just north and east of 45. So, so here is 45, and here, excuse me, I'm going to put a white line on here. Uh, this is 45, and then here is 78. Tornado is right in there. That is that low correlation coefficient. That is a clearly defined area of debris. That means that storm has just done a lot of damage. It's just done Tupelo. a lot of damage because it just is going through Tupelo. Yes. So it's picking up pieces of things. Yes. It's, right. Uh, this is it's moving northeast. If you live in Unity, Mississippi, that tornado is coming to you, toward you in moments. It's done damage. There's a tornado emergency now in Tupelo, Mississippi. The cleanup will begin shortly. Marietta, Mississippi, that tornado is headed toward you right now. Oh, this just breaks my heart to see this. This is just uh, awful to see this. That is a very well-defined debris signature there that has uh, come right across Tupelo. And uh, getting now a word that it's hitting the mall on the north side of Tupelo, about two miles north of downtown. And uh, there again, right where that ball is, that is where the tornado is located, right there. And that is that uh, rotational signature that is, look at that, that is what we call a tornado vortex signature. So here you've got the larger circulation in the storm, but then you've got a tighter circulation right there. And that is the tighter circulation that has just come through Tupelo 
And again, we're seeing that uh, tremendous area of debris as a result of that, and it's just very upsetting. Uh, mm. No matter how many mm. times you see this, Dave, I think the more you see this, as a matter of fact, it gets more and more upsetting. Well, that's yeah. just proof that the tornado has done damage. Yeah. We hope and pray that everyone has survived this as this moves through a city of 20, 000, 15 or 20,000 people. We just saw a video, live video, of a storm chaser, Reed Timmer, who is uh, on the road in Tupelo, Mississippi. We saw a whole lot of rain where he was. Uh, Reed, we hope you're staying safe watching this one. All right, we'll take a look at some of the other uh, warnings that are now in effect here. I want to get a little farther off to the south of Tupelo, uh, tornado warning there. Uh, let's go ahead and, and we've got some uh, tornado warnings to show you, and uh, we're going to go through the whole list of them because there's a whole string of storms now that are being warned on. So in this entire area, all of the parameters have come together where you've got very warm and humid air, very unstable atmosphere, and then you've got this wind shear, which leads to these long-lasting supercell storms that rotate and produce tornadoes. So first of all, a tornado warning for Madison and uh, Yazoo counties. We'll take a look at the velocity on that storm and uh, show you that there is uh, some rotation there. It's going to be generally coming up uh, past the Canton area. And uh, let's go to the storm that's to the north of that. Another one that's uh, right along 55 and 51. Uh, another tornado warning to tell you about, and that includes Kosciuszko. Notice here the appendage, and so right in here is where, excuse me, that possible tornado uh, may be headed up towards Durant and Goodman, and then eventually Kosciuszko. That's right across 51 and across uh, 55, where the most dangerous part of that storm is, and the, the movement here has generally been very fast. It's been on the order of uh, 45 to 50 miles per hour. There is the rotating part of that particular storm. Let's go to the storm to the north of that, Sean. See what's going on with the warning there. Another tornado warning, and that's uh, up right across 82. Uh, this is not uh, very far away from Starkville, Mississippi, Mississippi State University. It's off to the west, and uh, this is Montgomery and Webster counties, and uh, the tornado is going to be sitting right in there. And look at that. Wow. Another one of those very pronounced, robust rotational signature. They're uh, showing up right along Highway 82 and just east of Winona. So uh, please take cover there. Maybe we could go ahead and put the tracker on that, Sean, to see what cities are going to be involved in that. Eupora looks like at some point uh, all along 82 there. We'll extend that out. And again, the motion uh, on these storms has generally been northeast at about 45 miles per hour. So that's going to take it up into Kilmichael and Minerva and Embry and Walthall. So uh, folks, please take cover in those cities immediately, those towns immediately, as we've got a, a very serious storm coming your way. Again, that's Montgomery County uh, and Webster County tornado warning. Another warning for Chickasha, and that uh, is now just east of Houston, and then there's another warning to the east of that, and that's uh, just now to the, is right on top of Oklahoma, basically, that's Itawamba Lee and Monroe, and that includes uh, Fulton County. Uh, not seeing a, as much ev evidence of rotation there, certainly not as much as what we're seeing there in the Tupelo area. And as we go Let's back to back that to storm, yeah, 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 go back to that storm. Uh, wow, just an incredible rotation there. You see how right in here, uh, that is the. Let's go back to reflectivity just a moment. So we've got the rain wrapping into this large area of circulation. That's the rotating updraft right there. The warm and humid air coming in, feeding that storm. And we're still seeing a pronounced, pronounced rotation on radar there in Tupelo. That tornado hit the mall on the north side of Tupelo just moments ago, about two miles north of downtown. That tornado is moving away from Tupelo right now. I'm glad to say you can see where the blue and the red come together southeast of Saltillo, northeast of Tupelo. Below. That's the circulation. That's the tornado right there. It's moving toward the northeast, toward Unity, Mississippi, and also Marietta, Mississippi. But the worst is over, at least for the time being in Tupelo. Carl, I want us to check out that cell south of Tupelo because people are going to be getting out of their buildings here yeah. and having a look around in Tupelo. The tornadoes moved northeast. Is there anything else upstream that they have to worry about? Well, I don't think so. I mean, we've just got a lot of very heavy rain uh, in the wake of this thing, so I think that's the main thing. And, Sean, let's go back to the Gibson Ridge, and I want to show you uh, a couple more things with this uh, storm near Tupelo. Still a tornado warning, as we've still got a very strong rotation there. And um, 
There we go. We'll take a look at that Gibson Ridge. And so we're going to step back. Uh, this is the most recent frame right here. So here is the rotating part of the storm right there. That's where mm -hmm. the rain is being drawn into that rotating updraft. Now we'll step back uh, several frames and we'll watch as this approached Tupelo right in here. And at that point, uh, this was a large, what reported to be a large wedge tornado, multi-vortex tornado. This is the correlation coefficient, so we were seeing just a little hint of some debris right there as the storm approached Tupelo, then it moved into Tupelo, and look what happened afterwards. Then we saw this very large area of dust uh, and debris uh, developing there. That is a a pronounced debris signature that came through Tupelo and we saw that on reflectivity as well that's what we call a debris ball right there so that's where the radar which uh, normally is detecting rain and hail is actually showing you where there's a structural debris in the air and now a report of several tractor trailers being blown off highways 45 and 78 in uh, the Tupelo area. But once again, the tornado has moved on from Tupelo to the northeast. It's still a very dangerous storm. Unity, Mississippi, Marietta, Mississippi, under the gun for the same tornado that picked up debris in Tupelo. It could be picking up debris there too. If you can get below the ground, below the circulation, or if you don't have a basement, put as many walls between you and the outside and all that flying stuff when the wind comes. Put as many walls as possible between you and the outside. And also, if you have any bike helmets at home, if you yeah. have uh, bed pillows, bring them into an interior hallway or bathroom or closet to help protect you. Yeah, you know, there was a meteorologist in Kansas City uh, some years ago who was lambasted for suggesting that you get bike helmets out. Turns out that's a great thing that, to do. It's yeah. a great thing to do, to have a plan, to have a number of things ready. And obviously, if you, one of your or more of your walls collapses and you've got a helmet, mm -hmm. you're going to be in much better shape right. uh, if something happens. Uh, still looking at a tornado warning on that same cell now. And I'm going to uh, zoom out just a little bit. and, and uh, we're still seeing a rotating cells uh, all the way down and towards the 55 corridor as well. And uh, maybe we can go back to uh, looking at some of those, Sean, and kind of run through where the tornado warnings are right now to get people up to speed on, on where things are right now. So here's the storm in Tupelo. Uh, still seeing a lot of rotation there. Tornado warning continues to be in effect, but the, the tornado itself is now to the east of Tupelo. Uh, tornado warning for Madison County. Also, Atala and Holmes County. There's Madison County. Let's take a look at the velocity signature with that. And uh, there it is. There's the area of rotation right there. It looks like that might uh, be headed up towards Carthage, perhaps. It looks like it's a little south of uh, where that uh, warning area is. Mm. And there you see the little ball right there. That's the same thing that we saw in Tupelo. That's uh, again headed northeast. So that's going to be getting into Raytown and also St. Anne and Singleton. So there's where you need to take cover, uh, folks, as these cells move very rapidly north and east. Let's go to a little farther to the north, see what else is going on. Another pronounced supercell with an, an appendage here, circulation right over Durant as we speak, and that is uh, Atala in Holmes County. Let's go ahead and take a look at where that storm is gonna be headed. Again, we're seeing the pronounced rotation there, and that is gonna be moving off to the northeast, maybe just north of uh, Kosciuszko, and it uh, looks like some of the cities affected will be Possum Neck and Hesterville as uh, that moves off to the north and to the east. Just a reminder, this is in Mississippi where a tornado watch is in effect and there are many tornado warnings. This is video of the tornado that, that we saw from the WTVA-TV camera that they have right. above tree level, so they're really catching it up there. Yeah. You and know, you, that, you'll notice the camera's shaking, the wind's mm -hmm. beginning to pick up, and then that wedge-shaped tornado, presumably the, uh, the dark gray cloud that comes all the way down to the horizon right in yeah. the middle. That, that is a very large and very mean tornado, and, and, and often what happens when you've got a tornado that large is they begin to break down into several funnels. And so when you think about, you know, you've got this, this main motion that's occurring uh, laterally in the tornado, you've got an inflow that's occurring, you've also got a vertical motion that's occurring, but then within that you've got these rapid changes in wind speed and direction as each one of these funnels comes by and cycles, and it rapidly changes things, and that can cause extreme damage, extreme violence extreme when you've got damage. a, a multi-vortex tornado. That's the type of storm that can and, you know, knock homes off their foundations altogether. Because you've got those little areas of spin, the vortices, right. within the whole 
right. rotating. Exactly. So you add one to the next, maybe it's exponential, maybe you multiply it. Exactly. Huh? You, you've got, you know, think about the rotation speed in general, and then on top of that, you get the speed within the funnel, and then maybe even the funnel itself is moving. In fact, in That's El right. Reno, right. in the case of El Reno, it was traveling at 185 miles per hour. The, it, itself, it was the, traveling yes, that fast? one of those tornadoes was traveling at 185 miles per hour. Wow. So that's why we're talking about extreme violence. Extreme, you, extreme violence. Yeah, right. it, it just really does look at break this. your heart. Reports in local media, Tupelo, Mississippi, reporting lots of damage. Yeah. That, that's how they determined it. All the students were dismissed early due to the threat of storms. Yeah, thank we goodness. can only hope that they got home in time. Well, you know, I hope so. We, we were hearing about a lot of schools dismissing as early as uh, you know, 11, 12 o'clock oh, in the morning. Okay. So All I right. think at least a lot of counties were thinking about that early on mm -hmm. uh, as those storms started to develop in Louisiana. Okay. Um, there's a look at the radar picture. I just now. got a message that the oh, kids yeah. were released at 1230. Just Great. in case any parents are watching, you know, just yeah. so you know, 1230. Okay. Great. Yes. So that storm is now beyond Tupelo. It the is tornado beyond. threat is over in Tupelo. That's right. But with a lot of damage, one thing you don't want to do is get out on the road, unless it's an absolute emergency. Yeah. Because undoubtedly there are trees, there's debris, there are live power lines, there might be some flooding. Stay where you are in Tupelo for the time being. And we've got another warning to tell you about here. Uh, that's near Verona. What, what county is this, Sean? Um, this is, oh, this is the one that's, oh, I'm sorry, this is near two, I just didn't see that. Okay, so this is Itawamba and Lee counties, and this is the cell that is now east of Tupelo. And let's go ahead and put that tracker back on there and see where that storm is headed next. And I'll tell you, as I'm looking at the other radar here, there's still a, a, a very serious circulation there. But what's interesting is that it's just about entirely rain wrapped at this time, which makes it even more dangerous. Uh, you're just not going to be able to see that coming at all. It's going to be a wall of rain, and then within that, buried within that, would be the tornado. And this is going to be coming into uh, Marietta here at about 12 minutes after the hour, Moore's Mill at 320, and then Belmont at about 330. And Sandy Springs, too. And we should remind people, this is all Mississippi. You know, if, if you live in Atlanta, you might be familiar with Moore's Mill and Sandy Springs as names of places. That's not happening in Atlanta. This is all Mississippi. We're in tight on the radar, so it's hard to see a tornado outbreak taking place in the state of Mississippi, among other states, huh? Yeah, uh, certainly uh, Alabama under very serious threat because, you know, as these storms continue to go tonight, we might see more of a linear uh, storm development, but even within those linear storms, there can be circulations, and that's going to be a threat late tonight in Alabama, and that's of great concern to us. You know, a lot of people, most people have smartphones now, and you can get warnings on those smartphones. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you can if you are going to be going to bed in an area where there might be tornadoes coming through in the middle of the night, because a lot of people are killed by nocturnal tornadoes. That's uh, one of the main ways that people get by tor killed by tornadoes, because obviously, you're not thinking about it, and it's on you, and and that's that's it sure yeah so yeah. so we hope f folks have a way to be notified overnight tonight as these storms come in Carl thank you so much yeah Carl Parker just on top of this one of our many experts here at the Weather Channel our storm specialist today we'll check back with you cool. back thank to you. the studio with Alex all right, thank you guys so much. We want to check in with Don Lewis. He's the chief operations or operations officer for the city of Tupelo. And Don, I understand you have some information on damage reports coming in from that city. Well, Alex, we're starting to get some reports right now. We've got both fire and police on the ground throughout the city. It, it appears that most everything has happened toward the northern side of the community. All right. Now, I do understand that it appears schools were released at 1230 in the afternoon. Is that is that the case? That is correct. They sent out a message earlier. There was a decision to send the uh, the kids home at 12 between 12 and 1230. And then the uh, teachers were leaving around two o'clock. All right. Now, for those who maybe aren't familiar with the Tupelo area on the northern side of the city, where you say it appears there's more damage or more effects, what's located on that side? Is that more residential? Is that a business area? Most of the areas that I've listened to ha uh, on the scanner from the reports have been in residential areas. I've not heard a lot from the business community as of yet. And what kind of reports of damage are you getting in from those residences? Right now, it's mainly roof damage. Uh, there's debris in the roads, and also uh, there has been some hail, so some vehicles have been damaged. All right. Now, what is the plan moving forward? Do you alert the, the fire uh, police officials then to go out there and investigate? 
they're they're already on the ground. They're in the area. They were stationed at various locations throughout the city when the alert came in, and they've been monitoring the situation and passing the situation back to City Hall. All right, folks who maybe are watching from the northern side of the Tupelo area, what would you recommend they do if they have some damage or, or problems in their home? Do they call you? Who, to, who should they call? Right now, the, the most of the calls should go, or all of the calls should go through 911. Okay. So let everything run through 911. That way we've got them directed and going in the right direction. And uh, the biggest thing is stay safe and, and stay off the roads. And if phones aren't working, you have officials out there that are going to be looking through the areas. Correct. We've got, uh, we're already starting to enter some of the neighborhoods, and there's been talk of in the damaged areas going door to door if we need to. Again, I don't have a full extent of the damage at this time, but I know there is tree damage and there is uh, some structural damage. And I guess I should reiterate, we do have a few reports, or at least one report coming in of trailers being blown off the highway there. You did say that people should stay where they are, stay put and stay off the roads. Th that is correct. Please stay put. The Highway 78, which is part of Interstate 22 system, goes right through the north side. Okay, and that's part of Interstate 22. Thank you so much, Don Lewis, the Tupelo Chief Operations Officer. Thank you so much for joining us. And unfortunately, it uh, looks like you do have a busy afternoon ahead of you. And uh, it's been very busy and active on the radar. Dave Schwartz is out with Carl Parker, our storm specialist, and they are monitoring more in the way of the severe threat. Thanks a lot, Alex. To take a look at this graphic, and you'll see it's not just Mississippi that's in it today. It's Louisiana, it's parts of Alabama, Tennessee, Virginia. Kentucky, Illinois, Missouri, and Iowa. You knew this was going to be bad. We've been talking about it for days. It's happening. Here we are in the Appalachian Mountains, and we've got warnings for tornadoes from this cell moving toward the east-northeast. If you live in Lee, Russell, or Scott counties, southwestern Virginia, a tornado warning's in effect. Take cover in those counties right now in effect till 4.30 Eastern time, another 17 minutes or so. On our radar tour, we're heading to the west towards St. Louis, a line of severe thunderstorms, actually from Iowa all the way back in towards St. Louis. A warning is in effect now in the St. Louis metropolitan area, severe thunderstorm warning, and of course, you might as, might as well be a tornado warning. It's damaging winds or hail, and what is a tornado but damaging winds? Take cover, stay away from windows at the very least. If you can't get downstairs, stay away from windows. Because if debris starts flying around, branches, trash cans, windows are going to start breaking. So we don't want you anywhere near them, all right? Good. Under the stairway in the basement, perfect spot. First floor, interior hallway, great. Here come the thunderstorms into St. Louis. They're moving quickly. Heads up in Wildwood and just north of there for some hail. And then the wind just will blow in after that. Looks like these storms are about 20 minutes away from St. Louis. 20 to 30 minutes, at least from the western side, Manchester, places such as that. So we have a hail threat, damaging wind. The heavy rain's not going to be the big deal because they're moving so quickly. St. Louis first, West County, and then St. Louis City. Heads up. We're headed down the Mississippi Valley back into Mississippi, where it appears as if we've just been blasted. In Tupelo, Mississippi, reports of damage at the mall on the north side of town. Reports of trees and pieces of people's roofs all over the place. Hopefully that's all it is. But this is, appears to have been one large so-called wedge tornado extreme damage might have resulted from that. If a warning is issued, I want you to play it safe, you and the kids. Back to Carl now, our storm specialist for more. Carl? All right, Dave, we want to uh, get everybody up to speed on what's going on with the velocity data here and these storms, of course, if you are just joining us, We've had a terrible time, unfortunately, in parts of Mississippi. We saw a debris ball, which is to say that we know that there was debris from a large wedge multi-vortex tornado that came into Tupelo. That's within the last hour. That storm is now moving off to the north and to the east. And there is a look at the uh, live picture 
of this storm now. Notice that wedge shape there. It uh, can be very difficult to see. There's been a lot of rain associated with this particular storm. The rain has been wrapping around the tornado, but uh, there you see that wedge shape there off in the distance, and that, uh, again, a multi-vortex tornado. We're hearing about lots of damage there in the Tupelo area. And uh, that storm is now moving off to the north and to the east of Tupelo. So a whole string of supercell storms now making their way from 55 and on north and eastward. We're going to go through each of the warnings here and take a look at what's going on with these storms. Rotating storm off to the south, not being warned on for a tornado right now, but look at the hook echo there that is now just north of Kosciuszko. You can see how the uh, area of rain wraps back into the updraft right in there. That's a clear sign of a rotating storm, and that is uh, Atala County. That's in effect till 345, and uh, there's a look at the velocity data. I'm going to go over uh, to the Gibson Ridge, and uh, once again, a very strong rotational signature, and this is now just to the east of West West and Durant. So right in there, that is the rotation uh, of the parent storm, and it uh, looks like it could very well be producing a tornado. Looking at uh, whether or not there's any debris, it's not obvious, but there is that hook echo. And uh, once again, this is the area where the rain wraps in to the updraft, the warmer inflow coming in right there. And uh, it's right in that little notch where the tornado often likes to uh, drop down. And so that's uh, most likely producing a tornado now east of west and Durant. Okay, let's go back to uh, seeing some of the other warnings there. Oh, this is the same storm, and so that is going to be uh, coming up into Carmack at 3 318, then French Camp at 337, and then Chester at 350. So in any of those towns, please uh, take cover as this storm moves rapidly off to the north and to the east. All right, another warning to tell you about. That is for Eupora, excuse me, uh, Clay Webster counties and the towns of Eupora, Mantee, and Walthall until 415. And then let's go off a little farther to the north and take a look at uh, another warning there. And here we're getting into the storms, uh, or at least one of the storms that just passed through Tupelo. Warning there for Itawamba and Lee and Monroe County. And then also looking at a warning uh, to the north of that, continued warning on that same cell that came through Tupelo. New warning there. Uh, and there it is for Itawamba, Prentice, and uh, Tishomingo counties. And you know, one of our weather producers uh, just tweeted a picture, really fascinating to see. If you zoom out just a bit, almost three hook echoes, one after another, kind of in a line, moving yeah. through the state of Mississippi. And uh, oftentimes you can see that. And oh, we're getting some pictures now from Tupelo. And uh, my goodness, uh, that is uh, what we have feared all along, that we were going to see damage like that. It's not at all surprising, given the amount of damage that we saw in uh, the radar returns there, but uh, obviously this has been very bad indeed in Tupelo. Exactly. You were getting those radar returns uh, identifying what likely was some debris. And when we look at these pictures and, you know, talking to the chief operations officer for the city of Tupelo, this is mainly a residential area and a lot of the reports coming in were from residences. So not necessarily a, a high area or, or amount of businesses in this region, but unfortunately a lot of homes where maybe the kids who were sent home from school were already. Yeah, you know, not a real big town. And, and as I mentioned with Dave earlier, uh, that's actually where I, I started at WTVA and uh, a lot of good folks up there and it's just uh, it's heartbreaking to see that this has happened to them as this uh, huge tornado has come in to Tupelo there. The, the threat is over now, at least for the time being in Tupelo as that storm is well off to the north and to the east, but uh, is still most likely producing a tornado. We're still seeing a very strong rotation in that storm as it moves up uh, just south of Marietta and uh, towards Belmont. All right, well, you know, looking at some of these damage pictures, it does appear that some of the structures, at least the foundations or a few of the walls are in place. So that might give us at least some hope that the folks who did heed the warnings, heeded the advice, got to that lowest level, most interior room. At least it appears, you know, without a basement, you may have had a shot in this case. Yeah, you know, it's hard to tell exactly what we're looking at. And sometimes you don't get a look at the very worst of the damage. And always when you have a large wedge uh, multi-vortex tornado, you're concerned about the, the possibility of the very worst first type of damage that is pretty significant damage that we are seeing there it looks like at least part of that structure has collapsed along with this one as well so uh, you know just glancing at it, it looks like we may be up into the EF2 and possibly EF3 range here but uh, you know as i say there may be much worse damage that uh, we're not getting a look at here. It could be a lot worse than yeah, that. Yeah, and very good point. You know, Don, the oper operations officer said they were urging people to stay off the roads because unfortunately now a lot of debris is lo blocking roadways and perhaps blocking some of areas where we might have seen some more severe and, damage. And it can be very dangerous. You know, a lot of power lines are down and the last thing you want to do is uh, when you're trying to get out there and help people is to uh, step on a live power line. 
Uh, so we urge folks to be very careful and, and not to run out right away and, and get involved in this unless they're being asked to. Right, and stay put because they've got the officials out there, the police, the fire officials, if needed, will be doing those door-to-door -door checks. And you know, it's not over now. Mississippi isn't the end of the road for this severe threat. No, and we're getting a report now of a confirmed tornado in Lodi, and uh, we're going to take a look at that on the radar picture right now. Let's go back over to Max 6 and show you where that storm is right now. So this is to the north west of Amory and uh, the rotation is going to be right in here on the southwest side of the cell. It looks like that's going to pass just to the north of Amory. Uh, not the most well-defined rotation signature I've ever seen, but certainly there is some evidence of rotation there. And uh, that is going to pass right past 371 as well as 45. Here, by the way, is Tupelo. That was the area that was hit hard by that large wedge tornado earlier. Uh, off to the south and west there, still some big tornadoes uh, possibly with some very well-defined hook echoes. You see how the rain wraps back and into that rotating updraft right in there. And uh, let's look at the velocity signature on this particular storm. That is a Tala County uh, warning there. Oh, wow, look at mm -hmm. that. That is a very well-defined rotational signature. And in fact, I'm going to uh, bring up the Gibson Ridge so we can get another look at that. And uh, right in here is that storm. And that is passing just to the north of Kosciuszko. So right in here is where that tornado is uh, likely to be sitting. And we look at the velocity data and yeah, that's a very, very well-defined rotational signature right there. So right in here, strong rotation being detected on radar. Looking for the possibility of some debris there. I'm not seeing much evidence of that. So uh, perhaps uh, some reason to hope there, but certainly there's very strong rotation there with this particular storm as it moves to the north of Kosciuszko. And as we expand the picture a little bit and take a look at where this generally might be headed. Uh, notice here we've got French Camp and Weir and McCool. Those are some of the spots where we might be looking at this possible tornado. And these storms have been moving very quickly too oh, yeah. on the order of 50, 55 miles an hour. So we're talking about highway speed. This does not give you a lot of time to prepare. Absolutely. You know, there are a couple of really big problems today. One is, as you mentioned, the, the movement, you know, and oftentimes when we get a radar scan, there might be three or four minutes before we get another radar scan. So it actually can be well ahead of the area that we're showing you. Then on top of that, because there's so much moisture in the atmosphere, these storms are rain wrapped in a lot of cases. And we saw that with the storm in Tupelo. Right. Here you had this big, mean, large wedge tornado that was causing tremendous damage. And we couldn't even see the thing as it was approaching because there was so much rain wrapping into that circulation and that's the type of thing that really worries me and there's a look at uh, I think these are pictures from earlier right this is the that, video uh, from Tupelo yeah of that wedge tornado as it was moving along it took a long time for that storm to come into view but uh, again with a large storm like that oftentimes these circulations break down into multiple funnels and then when that's happening you think about all the different types of motion that are occurring within that storm in fact if we could put that on the telestrator uh, you know basically you've got inflow into the storm. You've got a, a very strong lateral flow, obviously, of the wind that's going around the storm like this. But then you've got inflow into the storm, a very strong inflow, and then you've got motion that goes up. And then within that, if there are several little funnels, then you've got these individual circulations. And so the wind is changing very, very rapidly in terms of direction and speed. Uh, that's often why we hear about these reports of there being tremendous damage on one side of a house and then a, a table that is set on the other side of the house. And something, something like that. that Mike Bettis has been seeing, you know, the bowling balls sitting yes. perfectly in place amongst, uh, you know, a destroyed building. You, we also saw some power flashes over towards the left side right. of the screen. So another indication, perhaps, that we were looking at multiple funnels. Absolutely. Uh, a very serious indication that uh, you've got something uh, big on the way. Something some else, you know, mentioned, I should say, there are a lot of trees in this area too, oh, Paul. Yeah. And so if you're on the roads, you might be looking and you might not be able to see in the skyline. You know, it, it is so hard to see tornadoes in this part of the world. You know, we talk about, um, you know, tornadoes are very different in the plains because you've got higher bases usually. You don't have as many trees. You've got very flat terrain. You get into the south, you've got more rolling terrain. You've got trees and then you have low bases. So oftentimes you can't even see things until they're right upon Makes you. Makes them a little bit more dangerous. And now we are getting some of those damage pictures coming into us from two below. Uh, another reference to the wooded nature of the area. You can see some downed trees. This one's sent in from a Twitter user. And wow. this, uh, you can't even really tell, you know, first guess might be maybe a gas uh, station. Yeah, I think that might be a gas station, but it, it looks like that that part of the gas station, you know, where the convenience store is, it looks like that has collapsed. And uh, let's just hope that no one has been hurt in that particular 
And yes. here's another one coming in from Saltillo, Mississippi. Don't know if this was maybe one house next to another. Looks like it was a garage oh. that has been destroyed. And, and see how, how the walls have come in. And you know what they're going to do is they're going to go out and they're going to assess all of this. And, and with the new EF scale, it's not simply a matter of what the damage looks like. It's also a matter of what the structures are like, what they're made of, how well they were constructed. There are many, many damage indicators that they will consider before rating this storm. But uh, again, when you got a big tornado like this it, it wouldn't be at all surprising to see some higher end damage as a result right you know we are looking at some perhaps brick or concrete structures obviously it's going to take a little bit more force to take one of those down as a pair as opposed to maybe a carport with just a, a single piece of, of thin metal over that all right so let's get back into some of the warnings here and uh, I want to show you now in Prentice and Tishomingo County there is an ongoing uh, warning there and so this is the same storm that came through Tupelo earlier and uh, Sean let's go ahead and get a look at the velocity data on this storm and see what's going on inside that and uh, sort of a convoluted pattern there uh, not well it looks like we've got a circulation right in here um, yeah, I would say right in there is where the greatest circulation is. And so that is now uh, near Red Bay, and, and that is going to be, again, moving very rapidly off to the north and to the east. And there's a look at some of the towns in the path. And we're talking about Dennis, uh, 333, Burnstown Neal at 334, Burnstown 342, and then Red Rock at 4 p.m. All right, and then we've got another tornado warning just off to the south, right around the Red Bay area now. That one also moving quickly off to the north. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, most likely an extension of this particular warning off okay. to the west here. I think they've, they've done that. So let's go to the south, Sean, and, and take a look at what else. That's Colbert and Franklin counties. So that's an extension of that storm that uh, came through the Tupelo area. Then south and east of Tupelo, uh, warning here for areas just north of Amory. The worst of that storm has just come right across 45. Circulation is going to be right in here. Let's get a look at the velocity data and see where that is. Uh, and that is, uh, uh, I'm not seeing a really well-defined velocity signature there. So, um, you know, certainly we're concerned about, let's go back to the reflectivity. We'd be most concerned about the southwest part of the cell, right, where there's this little bit of a hook in here. Let's go ahead and take that out, Sean, and see where that is going to be uh, headed here in the next few minutes. That uh, is going to be moving northeast, as they all have and rapidly so in the next half hour or so we'll be coming perhaps close to Evergreen and Smithville and also there towards Turon and Tremont. And we've seen some heavy rain along with these and you know if you're just joining us now we've been watching some of the storms today have been offering up heavy rain difficult to see these and they're moving so quickly that you don't have a lot of time to prepare and we've got even more tornado warnings further off to the south. That, that's really one of the scariest things when you get tornadoes in a, in a uh, heavily moisture laden environment because you've got so much rain wrapping into these systems and you just can't get a good look at them until they're upon you mm -hmm. which is why we say when you get a warning we want you to take cover immediately in these areas don't try to go outside and figure out what's going on which I think is you know a lot of people's first reaction it's is human to, nature you right. want to go catch a picture you yeah. know, to share it with neighbors friends uh, media you want to send it in and say oh look what I spotted but right. when it's moving that quickly it doesn't leave you much time to get back inside and, and especially if it's wrapped in rain and here's another warning now for clay and, and webster counties that uh, includes eupora and manti and walthall that's going until 4:15. here again along that appendage 